Roger Wattenhofer, we've seen central banks, including China or the ECB or even the Bank of England, moving ahead with digital currencies. Why do you think Switzerland is not as interested as other central banks have been? So they, they are interested as well, actually. And uh, maybe they're a bit slower in adapting it than other central banks, but uh, they're certainly interested in following it. And I, I think it's okay that they're a bit slower than the others in this case. Uh, and moreover, I think the Swiss franc is attractive enough already, and maybe they don't need more of that. Uh, Switzerland famously loves cash and banknotes. Uh, how do you think the central bank can persuade the population to maybe abandon that love of cash a little bit in favor of like an e-Swiss franc? Right, so uh, recently there was a series of articles in the Swiss newspaper and they talked about the cost of debit cards and Twint, which is the Swiss payment solution, a Swiss payment solution. And it turns out that for uh, shops, this is actually quite expensive. And cash is expensive as well, so people don't know that so well, but uh, cash, to produce cash is very expensive, especially Swiss money, in fact, is much more expensive than euros. And uh, also the handling of cash to get the cash back from the retailers to the banks and between the banks and to provide ATMs and so on. So basically the consumer and the taxpayer, they are paying the price for these for cash as well. So if people knew that, uh, you know, central bank digital currency could be m less expensive, they might like that actually. So with e-francs, we would have this idea that we could have a really cash efficient, so ca uh, money efficient solution in the sense that, you know, it would be costing much less for retailers, much less for the government. And for consumers, it should be pretty much free as well, like cash is. So it would be like a win, 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 as marketing people would probably say. What about the question of, of control? Is, is that a concern? Yes, so it's a very much a concern. So uh, lots of central banks seem to have a hidden agenda when it comes to introducing CBDCs, uh, in particular, there are countries which try to control their citizens by looking at all the payments. So that would be a big problem, in my opinion. And also the EU, it tries to introduce uh, negative interest rates on cash, in some sense, by introducing CBDCs, which I also think is, uh, is not fair. So in my opinion, CBDCs should really be uh, a replacement for, for cash. It should have all the same things as cash. It should be anonymous. It should be, you know, not interest bearing and it should also work if, uh, if something, uh, you know, does not work, like if you have a power failure or if the internet is down. Is central banking digital currency the solution if there is a power outage, for example? Uh, yeah, so you can, you can do that. I mean, we actually work on that, that you can uh, do this even if you have a power outage, you know, in extreme cases, not in the regular case. In the regular case, we'll pay with it as you do with a phone today. Uh, but I think more important even is that we kind of have a market of systems in some sense that we can be competitive between different systems and, and that would be something I would like, right? So I would love that, you know, if you pay with a cheaper solution than cash, for instance, and CBDC might be a cheaper solution, that you might get a bit of a price reduction at the shop or the retailer. So that would be something I would like that you can kind of have a a competition like you already have in online shops. So, so that would be something I, I would look forward to. And the competition question is also a very interesting one. We've seen a lot of private initiatives really booming. Obviously, Bitcoin is, is the most well-known one, whereas government initiatives like the ECBs, if it decides to go ahead, would take about four years to roll out. Do you think private initiatives are already way far ahead, too far ahead for central banks to catch up? So if you look at uh, crypto money, classic crypto money like Bitcoin, I would say they have a huge list of problems and that's uh, you know, not going to work for everyday payment solutions. So they have not been designed for that. And I think government solutions could be designed for that better and they would have an advantage there. But the same thing is true for private solution like Facebook's DM solution, for instance. I would guess they will be competing regarding payment systems. Is this the beginning of a new currency war between central banks and things like Bitco Bitcoin or Ethereum? Uh, the microphone is falling off. <laughs> so uh, I d there might be a war going on between different currencies if you want, right? Uh, I would say the war is probably between 
you know, official currencies, government currencies, and more like libertarian currencies like Bitcoin. Uh, but as long as we have a market which can, uh, you know, basically handle these situations and, you know, we can have what is the cheaper solution for this or that uh, problem, I think we should be fine. So I don't think there will be a war going on eventually. Uh, so maybe we'll, s we'll pay differently in 10 years, but uh, uh, nothing to worry about, I guess. No wars. Can you tell me what central banks can gain through a digital currency that they can't gain through other ways, other methods of digitization that we've seen, for example, in the EU? Uh, so it's, I think it's very important here to see that uh, the, the way digital currencies are implemented. So don't think of digital currencies as being implemented like Bitcoin. That would be a big problem because it would be a real energy problem, for instance, uh, as much as, you know, driving with a really bad car. Then people will probably say you're, you have a social stigma using Bitcoin or something like that. So Bitcoin will be much more implemented the way you think, you know, kind of like classic digital solutions in some sense. Uh, so you have no blockchain, you have no mining, you don't even have consensus, basically. It's more like a replicated database and as such, it should be very efficient. I was wondering also, is it not a contradiction of terms to have a decentralized monetary system that is centrally governed? Or in other words, if it isn't broke, why are we fixing it? Yes, it's a nice question as well. So uh, I would say usually centralized solutions, unless the government does it, so to speak, uh, are more efficient than decentralized solutions. And even centralized solutions are decentralized to some extent because you want to have fault tolerance. You cannot just store your data in one place, right? But if you think about decentralized organization, this is usually somewhat with an overhead, but in some cases, uh, comes with an overhead, but in some cases it's actually worth it because, because you, you can do something centralized, right? And you really have to trust the central authority and decentralized solutions kind of di distributes this trust in a nice way. And uh, I think that's something we should really have in many more processes in society, also when it comes to voting or elections. Nowadays, I don't really know whether my, my vote was actually counted. It would be a huge uh, endeavor to figure this out. And with decentralized solutions, we could probably do that. Very interesting thoughts, not just on uh, central banking currencies, but also on the wider implications. Thank you, Roger Wattenhofer. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>